888-900-3362. All right, 21 minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you are um, just old enough to have wanted anything, I guess, you might say some people are so lucky, right? Some people just have all the luck. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe there's a way to um, stack the odds in your favor or whatever. I don't know if, th- if this is going to apply to everything in life, but this is a fascinating topic. The book is called How Luck Happens, Using the Science of Luck to Transform Work, Love, and Life. It is written by Janice Kaplan on the phone with us. She's a magazine editor, a television producer, a journalist, the former editor-in-chief of Parade Magazine, and a New York Times bestselling author. Good morning, Janice. How are you? Good morning. Great to be with you. Thanks. Are you are you in all these roles? New York Times. Is it because of luck? Are you just lucky? And if you are, how did you do it? <laughs> we want to learn. <laughs> well, you know, um, lucky in the sense that we talk about in the book, which is that you create your own luck. And a lot of times we think of luck as something that just falls from the sky, right? It just magically lands on some people and not others. But the truth is that if you know some of the basic principles of luck, you can be one of the lucky people. You're right. Some people always look luckier than others. And usually it's because they've put all of the right things in place to make that luck happen. So is the luck we're talking about more applicable to finding a job, finding a mate, uh, finding a good home, uh, as opposed to winning at at the lottery or winning in a casino? It's definitely not about winning at the lottery, but it is definitely, but it is about winning at life, and that means, uh-huh. as you just said, uh, in, in your job, in your love life, in, in in your career. And one way to think about it is to look at luck as being at the intersection of random chance which you can't do a whole lot about, and two other things that you can do a lot about, which are talent and hard work. And by talent, I don't mean you have to be Meryl Streep, but talent includes a whole bucket of things, like being able to recognize possibilities, like knowing where there are opportunities, like being willing to take a little risk, Mm -hmm. knowing what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, hard work is hard work. And when you focus on those two, uh, then when random events do happen, you're actually much better able to take advantage of them than if you're just waiting and hoping that luck is going to hit you. Yeah. You you said knowing uh, where. The word where popped out at me, and I want to tell you why. Where are you right now? Where are you? I'm in, I'm in New York. Okay. See, New York is the place to be for a lot of things. Not everything, for, for a lot of things. And so I want to tell you this, that in doing a radio show in a small town, um, we meet so many people who are so amazingly skilled at either writing or singing or something. You know, they got talent that, that seems like it should be big time. And yet they're not. And the, I always think, what would change that for them? It would be moving. And I know nobody likes to move, <laughs> but I always think you got to move. You got to go. That that would help. That would increase your chances of being lucky. Let's say. Well, you're you're right, and um, uh, you really do need to put yourself in the place where where luck can happen, where where luck can find you. Um, and uh, you know, for some people, being in the small town may be may be the, the the best answer to that. But if you feel like you've outgrown that, you are going to have to pick up and and go to places where where other opportunities might be able to find you because they're they're not going to necessarily come to you. And over and over again, we've seen that example of of somebody deciding that yeah, it's time for me to go to. Silicon Valley, or it's time for me to go to Hollywood, or it's time for me to make those connections, because one of the key ways of making luck is through other people, and um, it's not just the people who are closest to you. You know, mom loves you a lot, but but staying close to mom, unfortunately, is not necessarily the best way to make luck, and, and by the way, while we think of America as being a place where people are always on the move, they're not. Some Something like 75% of people still live within 10 minutes of their moms. Um, Did so, you move? So you're absolutely you're absolutely right about that i did, did i grew up outside of i grew up outside of boston oh well boston and, uh, also would be a, a happening place. I, <laughs> I i guess it depends on what you want doesn't it I, I so i have one question regarding that specifically uh do you think the internet has made it more e- e- easier i guess to uh to have that kind of luck could could we, could a, a talented person for example a, a writer or somebody be discovered living in the middle of nowhere now because of the internet 
Well, sure. Anything can happen. But I think one of the prime ways of making luck, as I said, is with other people. And and um, it's not just that close circle. It's that second circle of what sociologists call weak ties, which are the people who aren't the ones you see every day, but that, that you see on occasion. And the people you regularly see, the people, as you described it, in, in your small town, they all know the same opportunities, right? They can't find something new for you. But it's people in that second circle who have other contacts, who have other connections and who might go, oh, yeah, wow, you're really good at that. You should meet, you know, you should meet my friend Joe. And so being able to expand those kinds of connections, and I guess you can do it on the Internet. You can start it that way, but really it's sort of like dating, right? You can meet somebody on the Internet, but nobody ever got married on the Internet. You are going to have to take Mm -hmm. that (laughs) next step of being face-to-face, of talking to somebody and getting to know them, uh, whether whether it's for business or love. And you also took the time to interview people to get their perspective and point of view. Right. Well, we interviewed um, all sorts of people, uh, from psychologists to, to, to uh, um, academics and researchers of all kinds, as, as well as people who have looked like they are lucky in life, whether they are celebrities or, um, uh, or, or very successful business people. And so often people will tell you the story of the one event that made them lucky. You know, I sat next to somebody at dinner who just happened to give me a job. And uh, that sounds like luck falling from the sky, but then you take it back a couple of steps and you usually find out there was a reason they were sitting next to that person somebody wanted them to meet them they had a great idea that they were proposing to that person they knew the right thing to say to them so um some so often when we look at our own lives and we think of of that miracle of luck you know the the person that you married everybody has the story i was just walking down the street and there she was well guess what there were a lot of people walking down the street how did you make that event event happen yeah. Uh, and if you think of it that way, you realize how much luck is your own actions, your own following through on something that's uh, that's in front of you. It's it's such a great message to give to a young person, especially well, to all of us really, but especially to a young person. I, Robin and I had this conversation the other day. We were talking about how when we're younger, you have your heart set on somebody to be your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and you you're so blinded to the fact that there are there are a thousand other girls in the school or a thousand other boys. Whatever, and and so you you limit your chances because she could say no and then you're heartbroken so let her say no and then move on to the next one <laughs> you know yeah you, we don't do that with jobs we don't have our heart set on a job we just look for some job right and then and take it from there you're absolutely right, and at the risk of sounding terribly unromantic here, we, we do have a chapter called uh, How to Get Lucky in Love, and spoke to um, a couple of uh, very well-known psychologists, including Dan Ariely at, at Duke and Barry Schwartz at, at, uh, at Swarthmore, and they both came up with the same formula for getting lucky in love, which was invest in the relationship that you have. Luck never gets made the day that you meet somebody. It doesn't even get made by the time you marry somebody. Uh, people who you look at who you think of as oh, aren't they so lucky to be together it's because of what they've put into the relationship once they had the relationship Absolutely. once it was there once they knew they were going to stay and they decided that they were going to invest in each other yeah. so again maybe not the most romantic message but probably the best message for making you lucky in, in, in love and marriage uh, we have to wrap it up I want the listeners to know the, the book is, is way more detailed than we were able to cover in 10 minutes uh, she talk, you talk about a luck laboratory a luck lab which I think that's very fascinating on how to mm-hmm. experiment with your own luck and and stack the things in your favor that, that need to be there. Um, good advice. I hope somebody uh, pays attention and, and improves their lives with this. You know how many times I walk through the park and when I live in Santa Monica and I would walk past these homeless people and I would always say, why don't you know, can you do something about this? And, and they would say, I'm just not lucky at anything. And I would think, oh my gosh, no, 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 there's a way. There's a way to get out of this. And anyway... Uh, you mentioned young people, and I think you're right. You know, it's a great book to give to, to to young people to remind them that, yes, you do have more control over your life than you think. And that's such a positive and helpful message for all of us to know that uh, that we can make things happen. And, and there's just some kind of a vibration coming from you, not to sound like a hippie. But, I mean, you sound you sound up. You sound positive. <laughs> so I, I love that. I love that, Janice. Uh, Janice Kaplan, thank you for being on the show with us. Good luck with the book. 
Thank you. Uh, I, how do we get the book? Let me ask you that before we say goodbye. Uh, go on Amazon right now. It's called How Luck Happens, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or your favorite local bookstore. And it uh, just came out this week, so uh, copies should be available. Very good. Thank you, Janice. We will take Thank a break. You. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Here is your one-minute news brief. Lake County crews investigated suspicious substances that turned up at facilities in Mount Dora and Leesburg. Investigators determined the white powder was baking soda. The Florida House passed a gun violence prevention pass.